But in any case, um, we need to, well, it's clear that we need to take into account more than just length of input. Uh, measuring the variable simply in terms of the number of years sp spent in the L2 environment or number of years spelt in, spent learning the language in the classroom is a very crude um, approach, and we need something more fine-grained. Okay? Um, so here's, here's some interesting work um, um, done by John Aronson. Okay? They were looking at um, immigrants in the United States, and they showed clearly that the same length of residence in the L2 environment, in, in this case America, can be associated with widely varying amounts and intensity of L2 exposure and use. Well, again, this is not, this is not rocket science. You just maybe think about some friends of yours uh, who, who, who think, think about the year abroad. This is, this is a good one, actually. Think about the year abroad. What do people do or, or when they go for a, a period abroad? Okay? Some people, so you go to, let's say some of your students go to England okay, for a while. Uh, or people you know may go to England. What do they do? Some people get a, an English girlfriend or boyfriend. Okay, they spend their entire time speaking English. Others uh, take a flat with other uh, Catalans and spend the entire spe time speaking Catalan. Right. So there's, there's a great difference in um, what people do during their period in the L2 environment. I I, I used to run a, an exchange program with with France. Okay. And I was, I was very struck by, um, uh, from one year to the next, by, group, by groups of students who went to Grenoble in France. Okay, the first year, there were two young women who went to Grenoble. They took a flat, set, they took fl separate flats. They socialized in French. They, they, one of them took a job in a French cafe. They came back uh, to Ireland uh, with brilliantly improved French. The next year, a group of five students went to the same town. Okay, they all took a flat together. Okay. They spent their entire time drinking uh, and t uh, in the same pubs or the same cafes. They spent the entire time speaking English. They spent the exact. They spent. They also spent nine months in France, but they came back, if anything, with their French disimproved. You know. So years in the L2 environment isn't isn't is, is too crude a measure. So in this longitudinal study done by Yaron Aronson, okay. Um, okay, the, the, the dance involved Chinese speakers, okay, uh, aged between 5 and 16. And, they, and John Harrison documented how these children benefited from more contexts of L2 interaction than the, L, uh, uh, than the adolescents. So the younger children, okay, got more, uh, they, was, they got much more interaction, much more contact with the, um, the English-speaking population than the older ones. Think about it. You know, you go, you go to go to go to um, another country, and you're age five. You go to school. You have school friends. You know, you're 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 maybe you're probably you're, you're probably less um, fixed in your approach to the, the linguistic culture, uh, your identity. Okay. Uh, if you go when you're 15, you have a different experience of school, or maybe you, if you arrive later, you don't go to school at all. So. So the, the, these are age-related uh, elements. They're not necessarily uh, maturational, though. So the, the younger children had a higher number of L2 speaking friends. The older learners tend to, tended to choose L1 uh, peers as their, as their friends, you know, because they're that much older, they're that much more um, identified with the language and the culture from which they come. Moya argues that over and above quantifiable measure, measures of cumulative L2 experience, it's, import, it's important to examine the range of contexts of a target language use, as well as the relative interactivity required by those t contexts. So, for example, watching TV in the L2 is one thing, actually interacting in it is another. You, this is relevant perhaps to your uh, in, um, uh, preoccupations here. The, 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 it's one thing to just uh, listen to or um, uh, watch, uh, observe in, the, in the, uh, the language. Interacting in the language is another kettle of fish altogether. And, um, okay. 
Um, Moyer's 2005 study uh, looks at former learners of German as a foreign language um, who were tested on their spoken and written performance on certain selected syntactic constructions. The analyses showed that experience of interactive realms of contact were, were far more significant for spoken performance than instruction. And you, you, I know you all know this, but this, this is some research which, which bears it out. Uh, engagement in informal personal domains has also been observed to be a useful uh, predictor of native language pronunciation. If you can, I mean, this is difficult to uh, uh, contrive in a... In, in a uh, in an educational context, but perhaps not impossible. Now, turning to the effective dimension, you know, uh, this this comes to the this goes back to the cliche of you know, I want to learn French. What do I do? And the the answer is get a French boyfriend. You know, this is this this is the cliche. Now, and it's not it isn't it isn't entirely without uh, uh, grounding in in research, as you will, we'll see in a moment. Um, uh, it's, uh, the, the effect of that I mentioned has been actually discussed for a long time in the essay literature. I mean, people like Schumann uh, have been talking about it for years. Um, Moya encountered this dimension when investigating the L2 proficiency of 25 uh, successful L late L2 learners. She found that, uh, factors such as satisfaction with phonological attainment and level of motivation accounted for 74% of the total variance in outcome. And, and in, their, in their predictive power, these two variables were as strong as or stronger than age of onset and length of residence combined. So these were more important than anything else. And furthermore, the, the, the data that Moya gathered brought to the fore influences on the the individual's individual learning experience, such as their attitudes towards the L2 culture, their perceptions of foreigners, foreignness and belonging, and their intentions in regard to staying in the L2 community. And that these, these kinds of things are, have been talked about, as I said, for a long time, but you, you think about it. You know, the, well, perceptions of foreigners, perceptions of belonging, um, how, how much do you feel integrated into the community you're living in if you're a foreigner? <coughs> Uh, what do you intend in relation to the, uh, the, the, the community you're living in? I mean, I've been working with Poles. There been, in recent years, there have been a, there's been a big Polish migration in, in, into Ireland. And we looked at um, Poles' intentions in relation to staying in Ireland. Some have gone back, of course, in the, since the economic situation to crime. Others haven't, you know. Uh, and people were already able to say some years ago what they intended. <coughs> Some of them wanted to go back as soon as possible. Others s saw their stay in Ireland as a, a long-term prospect. And this had, a, this had a, a clear influence on their motivation in relation to English, their, their proficiency in English. You know, these, 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 these aspects of things need to, need to be uh, thought about more um, acutely, if you like, in relation to migrants. In a later study, uh, Moya describes the learner's orientation to the L2 language as uh, the L2 rather than the language as a main force behind how she or she, she or he utilizes L2 input. So um, your, in, your in, orientation towards the L2 influences what you make of the L2 input to which you're exposed. And Moya reads recent research generally as pointing to a need for a sharper focus on L2, uh, learner, L2 learners' intentions towards the L2. You know, what people want to do in the L2, what, 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 they, what on earth are, they, um, uh, are, are their intentions in, in relation to the L2? This has a clear influence on almost everything. Uh, learners' orientations clearly have an effect, uh, effective dimension, including the level of desire to become native-like in the L2. Not everyone does want to become native-like, and this is an interesting one. Uh, some people are quite happy uh, to remain uh, identifiable as a non-native speaker. Other, other learners want, want desperately to be, to be native, 
to pass for native speakers. Um, and this, has, this, this is not necessarily a matter of ability, it's also a matter of will. You know? In fact, some people uh, in, in a study that I was associated with recently uh, uh, demonstrated that they, they had become able to pass for native speakers of French in this case, that they, were, they, 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 had, they had got to a level in French where they were able, they were able to pass as native speakers. And they decided it was better to actually be recognised as a non-native speaker. You could get away with much. Well, think about it. You could get away with much more if you're if you're a foreigner. You have a freedom you don't have if you're not a foreigner. If you recognise a foreigner, you 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 people make allowances, which they don't make if they think, if they think you're a native speaker. So, um, um, yeah. I mean, this is coming back to what I was saying earlier about younger migrants have a different kind of relationship on the whole with host community peers as compared with their seniors. And, um, well, you know, there, there are two things. One is there are the kinds of opportunities that are available to young, yep, I'm, I'm getting to it. There are different opportunities available to young, young, young migrants and um, they have a different, uh, a different sense of their identity also. And um, this tends to, have the outcome of interaction in the L2 being different amongst uh, younger uh, migrants than in, in relation to older migrants. And this, this, may, uh, this, is, this is argued by John Harrison to, to partly at least explain that why younger migrants do better than older, older migrants. They have a different quality of contact, different kind of interaction. I'm not dismissing the maturational dimension, but I think there's more to it, as I said, than, 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 uh, than just maturation. Some re recent research conducted in, among non-Anglophone immigrant children in Dublin primary schools has also borne out uh, John Harrison's work. Point, pointed to a best friend, friend factor as important in promoting these children's opting to interact in English outside the classroom. Even with, even with members of their own language community. Uh, this is Carson and Extra on this study. The, the reported choice for English with best friends is particularly high and may be understood within a context where children select to use English as a lingua franca with children from language backgrounds other than their, their own, or indeed select to use English with children who share the same other language. It seems that the shift towards English language use here is located within friendships rather than family connections. And another study, this time looking at Russian-speaking families in Ireland, uh, show more or less the same thing, where, where um, friendship with peers outside the Russian-speaking com community was strongly associated with the use of the dominant host language uh, of, the, of the country. Um, Earlier studies had noted a, s a best friend factor in, in findings relating to successful late L2 learners. I, I, I mean, I just summarise this briefly as we're running out of time. Carmen Unioz and I did a, a study of um, some uh, Spanish-speaking, Catalan-speaking learners of English in Ireland who've been in Ireland for a long time. They, um, uh, some of them passed for native speakers. Two of them perfectly as native speakers. They did, they, they, their pronunciation was judged to be native-like. And what these two p people had in common was, first of all, a very, um, um, what's the word? Well, they were language aware, they were proud of their English and wanted to improve it, so, and they were both involved with Irish people. You know, they, one, had, one, had a girl, one, had a, one was involved with uh, the person who, in a marriage relationship, other, another person was uh, had a, a, um, a, an Irish boyfriend who later became her husband. So the effect of that dimension is is a is a. Um, uh, I, I'm moving on quickly here. Um, 